All right, y'all. So we got a quick bench update to uh, keep this channel alive. So next week we'll have the, uh, or at least next weekend I will record the full Roman army stuff that I have completed thus far, like the whole shebang base stuff and everything. Um, but I've had most of these guys done for a while. I just haven't really shown them on camera. So in the back, we've got the Victrix armored Roman cavalry. Uh, I was actually really impressed by this set. Um, I've been kind of skeptical of the Victrix cavalry in the past, and the riders are definitely a little larger than um, your, you know, metals. But I think they, I think they do okay, and I, the horses are quite a bit larger as well. Um, but I think that's actually more realistically proportioned. I think metal horses, they usually try and save on the metal and make them quite a bit smaller than they actually would be. But I was actually really pleased with this set. I have another um, one of these in plastic, or I mean still in the, in the bag. Uh, I'm kind of debating whether I want to make another unit of cavalry, Roman cavalry or mix them in um, and make some kind of armored Gothic cavalry. We'll see. We'll see. All right, next up, we've got some horse, ar horse archers. Um, I can't remember if I showed these off or not, but they've been done for a while. Uh, a couple of these figures actually gifted to me by uh, Ranger Miniature Miniatures and Gaming, so shout out to him. Uh, though, so two of them are, are foot sore. Uh, this one and this one, and then the other two are Aventine, Byzantines. Um, but yeah, a couple horse archers. And then we've got the Victrix Cataphract. So these aren't actually glued down yet. I've just been doing some dry fitting. Uh, so the horses, with the horses being the size that they are, um, with these guys, I put them about two to a base and they're gonna be in like two ranks. Uh, with the Cataphracts, I really wanna protect the spears. The spears are quite fragile, the long lances. I already have broken a bunch of them just handling them and I have to kind of glue them back together. Uh, so in order to, I don't want any of the spears like protruding over the bases. So uh, I was kind of dry fitting them. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I need to get more super glue, but I'm gonna super glue the bases together, like the front base and the back base together so I can put the, the models like further back on the base, if that makes sense. Um, and I think what I will do is I'm going to have one unit uh, with lances raised up, one unit uh, kind of charging. Maybe we'll we'll mix it up. I'm not quite, I haven't fully decided, but that's what I'm kind of thinking at the moment. I uh, have one unit with the lances leveled and that they won't look quite like this when they're done. They got kind of scooted around a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think one with the lances leveled, one with the lances mostly raised, and then glue the glue those bottom bases together uh, so they can be kind of pushed back. I think also that way can make them a little more densely packed as well, like a, a wall of steel. All right, so that's um, the Roman cavalry uh, that I've been painting over the past month or so, uh, mainly in February. But the, the Victor's Cataphracts, they're a little bit of a pain to put together, but man, they are some awesome, awesome models. I think Victrix just continually uh, continues to get better, and I'm excited to see what they, you know, in a few years. I think they've come a really long way in the past, like five years. I'm really uh, curious to see what they're going to look like five years from now, how good they're going to be. All right, so what we're we working on right now is the next batch of Germans. So these are going to be the veteran warriors and a lot of the commanders. Uh, they're a mix uh, here of Victrix and Footsore for the most part and a couple Westwind miniatures if you've ever heard of them. Um, they're kind of a smaller company. They have a small Arthurian range but they have some cool characters so I got I got a couple packs of those uh, a while ago. So that um, is the current thing. I think I got about like 20 popsicle sticks worth of these guys at least um, and the nice thing about Germans though, is they paint up really fast, at least for me, I can just kind of cr really crank these out. Um, and my goal, you know, the pace I kind of want to do this week, if we can swing it, is about three popsicle sticks, um, a day. Uh, that's kind of my goal. Three popsicle sticks a day. Um, I want to prioritize painting a little bit more this week, uh, than I have in the past. I've been, I was kind of busy last week. 
but three three popsicle sticks a day is the goal. Um, here's some that I've been working on so far. I mean, these are all done. You know, I kind of mainly do a mix of contrast paints, washes, and then a little bit of highlighting just to finish them off. Um, but I usually don't go super crazy with the highlighting, to be honest with these. And with the Victrix stuff, like, the detail is there that you can really, you know, paint a little lighter than you usually would and then use the washes to really bring out the detail. Uh, metals I would always, always highlight. Like, these are some foundry metals in the back. Those are all you know, highlighted. These ones like kind of minimal highlights because the plastic is so detailed. You can really use the washes to bring out the detail. Um, and, you know, rather than kind of painting in the detail with the highlights, if that makes sense anyways. I mean, I did do some highlighting on them, but, um, you know, especially the faces, like I find the Victrix faces hard to highlight because they're so fine detailed. So, yeah, cranking through these. Uh, this is the, uh, I got to stop painting now, but this is the last step um, I was working on. And these, these just have kind of like the under coats on them. And then I will uh, wash them and then we'll, we'll do the highlighting and whatnot. And one thing I do, so I do, I've been using two washes on these mainly. So the first one is Nuln Oil, which I put on the helmets. And I usually do like the metal work first. Um, especially the helmets, because when you do the known oil wash, it can run into the face. And if you've put skin color on, like I, the known oil just does not go well with skin at all. It kind of ruins it, you have to repaint it anyway. So I always do the metal wash first um, before doing the skin. Um, and then once the metal wash is on, then I will put on a, uh, or once that's dried rather, I'll put on a, seraphim sepia wash on the clothing um and then i'll paint in the the skin and then i'll do a, a reichland flesh shade on the on the skin and then we'll do some a little highlighting as needed probably on the yellow tunics uh one thing i have been doing is i've kind of moved to a this is the last thing i'll talk about in this video anyway it's not the most interesting thing in the world um but one thing that i've been starting to do for efficiency sake is doing kind of a staggered painting um production line and so what does that mean so these two in the front i just did uh quickly this morning so i started working on those two strips first of all and then i got to my first wash and i usually like to wait for the wash to dry before i i um move on to then you know paint start painting other areas of the model so i put the first wash on and then i started the next stick uh, and then I kind of start jumping back and forth between them. That's a way I've found to kind of to maximize my time anyways. All right. Um, I think that's it for right now. Um, we'll have a, a better production value video next weekend um, when we'll have the full Roman force completed thus far on display. Um, and, I, you know, I say thus far, I mean pretty much everything for the Strasbourg project that's Roman has been painted. Um, I'm just going to spend Saturday doing all the varnishing and basing. And I basically penciled out that whole day just as a varnishing basing day. Um, and I think that stuff, like you can really do it in bulk because it's pretty mindless. You know, it's not like painting figures where you kind of have to pay a little more attention or use a little more skill. Like putting some mud on the base is not exactly, um, you know, a higher order task, neither is the varnishing or whatever. So that's kind of the goal for Saturday. Just do a massive basing and varnishing um, effort, get it all done. And I think that stuff too works better on like the economy of scale because, you know, you're just slapping a bunch of varnish on it. You can really like crank through it. You know, once you got it, all your stuff out, you can just crank through it all. Same with the basics. So that's kind of the plan for Saturday, and then we'll we'll get the full army on display on Sunday, and then um, pack it all away, and then just crank out Germans for the most part. All right, so um, I'll stop yakking at you for now. Um, we'll have the uh, the full video next week, and uh, otherwise, I hope you have a a good weekend. See ya.